Yep, that's a fidget spinner. That's one of many owned by my son. And these things are all the rage. So, I decided to put together a little project where we can do a fidget spinner tachometer. Now, even if you don't have a fidget spinner, this project will work out well for you because you can make a tachometer for other things using this method. Let's take a closer look at it. So this system is made up of three basic parts, an Arduino Nano, and you can use any Arduino you want. I'm just using a Nano because they go nice on the breadboard. A Hall Effect sensor, which senses a magnetic field, and a display. In this case, I'm using an OLED display because this only needs two wires to work, so it's pretty simple to set up. So the setup is, we have five volts and ground coming from the Arduino going to the power rail. We have five volts and ground from the power rail going to our hall sensor, and the signal pin from our hall sensor comes over to digital pin two. Now you can make it any digital pin you want. I just did two. And then for our OLED, five volts and ground go to VCC and ground, serial clock, goes to A5, and serial data goes to A4. That's the I squared uh, C pins. And then we have the fidget spinner, which I have taken and put a little neodymium magnet in. So when that magnet passes over the spinner, it will trigger it. And the spinner will send a pulse, I mean the Hall sensor will send the pulse to the Arduino. The Arduino will count the pulses and display the current RPM and the maximum RPM on the screen here. Let's go take a look at the code. All right, here's the code for the Arduino fidget spinner tachometer. We need the wire library for the OLED display and the Adafruit SSD 1306 driver. We define OLED reset as pin 4, and then we create an instance of the Adafruit SSD 1306 called display with the OLED reset argument. Now we have a constant here, it's an integer, hall sensor pin equals 2. So all we're saying is that this variable, hall sensor pin, is equal to 2, and it cannot and will not change. We have another constant, this is an unsigned long. It is sample time, and it equals a thousand. That is the uh, one second sampling time. We have another constant. It's an integer called max RPM, and I'm just guessing here that the max you're going to spin that thing is 1500. And an integer called RPM maximum, which is what the actual reading for the maximum RPMs will be. And now for our setup, we begin the display at the hex address OX3C. The, the reason we put that in there is the Adafruit library wants to start this display at the hex address of OX3D as in Delta. And if you have one of the off-brand Chinesium OLEDs, they are generally set for OX3C. So if you have one of those Chinesium displays and it's not working, Try changing the hex address and it'll probably work. Unless you stepped on it or something. All right, so display display. We send whatever data is in the buffer to the display. And display clear to display, which clears display and buffer. Then we have one pin mode. That is hall sensor pin, and it is set for input. Now we have our display parameters. We set text size to one, color to white, and put the cursor in the upper left corner. Then we do a display print, which sends the word initialize into the buffer. We let it sit there and think about it for a second, and we send the buffer information to the screen. Then we clear the screen and the buffer, and now we're ready to get down to business. So to get down to business, the first thing we do is wait. It's just like the military. Everybody line up and wait. Next, we create an integer variable called RPM. And it equals the value returned by the function getRPM. 
Now, this is the first time we've passed a value from a function to the main loop of the program. And it's really simple. I'll show you how it works. Don't worry. Now we say if RPM is greater than RPM maximum, then RPM maximum equals RPM. I know it seems like circular logic, but all it's doing is checking if the current RPM is greater than what we stored in max RPM, then the new max RPM becomes that number. Then we call the display RPM function. Okay, so back up here where we RPM is equal to the value returned by get RPM function. So here is our get RPM function. We create an integer variable called count, a boolean called count flag, which we said is low. Remember, booleans are one, zero, low, high, on, off, you know, it's it's a two-state variable. We create an unsigned long called current time, which equals zero. And the reason we're doing it is an unsigned long because it might be over the 65,000 and so digits that an integer gives us. Uh, another unsigned long called start time, which is equal to the current millis. Now we say while current time is less than sample time. So if it's less than a second since we started this, we're going to check the state of our pins. So if a digital read of the Hall sensor pin is high, basically do nothing. We set or leave the count flag high. So in its idle state, the Hall sensor is going to return a high value. If digital read Hall sensor pin equals low, and count flag equals high, then we're going to increment count and we're going to set the count flag as low. That just keeps us from getting a double bounce there. Then current time, we're resetting our current time to millis minus start time. And then we're going to do the math. We're going to create an integer variable called count RPN, which is equal to the integer. 60,000 divided by the float sample time times count. And that just gives us our frequency in RPMs. And then here's how we're going to pass that value back to the main loop. We return the variable count RPM that we created right here. And that goes back up to here. So now RPM is equal to that value. Now we do our display and all it does is uh, it prints them out to the screen. Boom. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. So let's go do it. Okay, I had to stick our fidget spinner up on a little pedestal so I can get my fat fingers in there over the Holofix sensor. So we power it up. And wait. Initializing. And now you can see it says RPM zero, max RPM zero. So a little spin of the fidget. And now you can see we are at, well, 540 with our max was 840. Let me try again here. Five forty. I'm not real good at this whole fidget spinner thing. One more try. There, we got it over to a thousand. So, there you have it. The Arduino fidget spinner. Pretty cool, pretty easy. And whatever rotates, you can stick a magnet on and use it with a Hall effect sensor and count the RPMs. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.